Okay, welcome back everyone. This is Silicon Angle and theCUBE, our flagship program. We go out to the advanced extractive city from the noise. We're here live in San Francisco for AWS Summit, Amazon Web Services there. They go out and they go out to all the different air, major areas and do their learning and training. It's all free, uh, thousands of attendees learning about Amazon Web Services. This is Silicon Angle's theCUBE. I'm John Furrier, the founder of Silicon Angle. I'm joined by co-host Jeff Frick uh, with theCUBE, general manager of theCUBE and co-host Jeff. Uh, welcome back to our next segment with Luis Arez, director of Tech Alliance's Al Fresco. Welcome Thank to theCUBE. <laughs> Thank you very much. And it's Luis Sala, by the way, but that's okay. I won't tell anybody. <laughs> okay. Secret's safe with me. Okay. okay. <laughs> We, had, we saw him last year at, at AWS yeah. Summit 2013. So I guess first off, what's what's really changed uh, in the marketplace in the last year? Well, so last year I, I spent a lot of time talking about, well, a little bit about Alfresco with you guys, telling you how Alfresco manages uh, documents and uh, uh, both on-prem and in the cloud with hybrid technology and so forth. Um, and uh, and what's changed uh, uh, since then is that, well, we've been building a very good business. We've been around for a long time, but uh, a very good business with Amazon and uh, collaborating with Amazon on joint sales, joint deals, and basically delivering the value of the cloud and the value of open source document management to our customers. And uh, and this has just yielded tremendous results over the last year. It's been really incredible. So talk a little bit, because you guys didn't start out on Amazon. Like you said, you've been around mm -hmm. for a while. So talk a little bit about kind of how the Amazon relationship got started and then how it's how it's really grown and what that's been to your business. Sure, so, so we started off as a, as a commercial open source technology. So we, um, uh, People would download our product, install it on-prem, and use it to manage their mission-critical, business-critical documents, workflows, metadata, and those types of things. Um, and uh, and what we've been discovering over time is that number one, our architecture lent itself very nicely to being deployed to AWS, and number two, people were catching on to the idea of deploying um, our product to AWS. Here's what's beautiful about AWS. We've got compute, your servers, right? You've got storage, like S3, and you've got the database, right? Those are the three main things that, that Alfresco requires to function. So, as do all applications. Right, exactly, right? I mean, as do all, all, all applications. All applications. And, and that's, a, that's <laughs> the beauty of it, right? And just happens to be that, that our product works really well there. So great, so what we've been able to, to accomplish is, is we realize that we can easily integrate S3, which has its own propri proprietary interface, right? We, uh, we started demonstrating this to customers, people started deploying this, and, and just it just took off like wildfire. Now, did you have any type of a SaaS offering before? We, no, the, we, we built our SaaS offering using these uh, uh, these same cloud technologies. So we built it and run uh, run it on top of AWS. But we what we're seeing is a mix of, of customers that use our SaaS offering and others that deploy our product, whether you know on-prem behind the firewall or more commonly now AWS. Right. And don't tell me anything uh, that, you, that you get in trouble for. But in terms of growth within your business, yeah. You know the on-prem versus the SaaS offering. You know what what can you share with us in terms of you know market uptick and and market adoption, or are there specific types of customers that prefer one over the other? So, um, customers, the customers that tend to use our product are the ones that care about the security and privacy of their data. And they want to be very selective about how this data gets exposed outside of their environment. Uh, and so what we need to do is build a lot of you know, credibility and best practices in order to demonstrate that a customer can go to the cloud while still respecting those policies. And uh, and so so, our business has been a lot has it has involved a lot of that, right? So it has grown. Um, our SaaS uh, uh, customers do tend to use us uh, do tend to use us primarily for more lightweight collaboration nowadays. But we're building a whole new suite of SaaS products that um, that are going to. Um, deliver specific business functionality, and I'm going to use contracts management as an example here, uh, to that that will be delivered exclusively through the cloud, but also work on prem and, and behind the firewall. Interesting. So you're happy with the 40 second price uh, decrease that Andy announced? It's incredible. Earlier at the keynote. I mean, this this helps us. It helps our customers, right? You know, now we have a sec you know secure place to store the data that is even more affordable than it was before. Yeah. Right. And and it's just it is incredible. And and you know what? I expect to see this happening. You know, two to three times a year. We're going keep seeing more price drops. Amazon is about the only technology company that I'm aware of that drops prices, right? Even our own product, I hate to say it, sometimes goes <laughs> up in price, so yeah. So we were talking off camera before yes. you came on, and, and, you, and you shared a really funny story. And what's neat about Alfresco is you're kind of at the intersection between technology and kind of the new age thing, and, yeah. and old school paper, yeah. right? And, and how that is transitioning, and the, the specific example that we talked about involved 
the oldest of the old, which is government yes. with stacks of paper. Exactly. But, so I wonder if you could share a little bit about, about that Well, that yeah, so, you know, we know that government is, uh, uh, you know, there's a bureaucracy, there's a lot of, uh, uh, there are a lot of paper-based processes out there. And this one example, uh, there was a, there's a large government organization that handles um, uh, certain classes of, of claims and benefits and whatnot for, uh, for, for citizens and, and other constituencies. And, uh, and they had a very, very tedious paper-based process that would take over a year to, to process a claim and deliver the service to the citizen that, uh, that required it. And so, um, so this... A year. A year. A year to, to do the process. And uh, it got so bad that, um, that, that Comedy Central's Jon Stewart got into the picture. And, and I mean, this was all over the news, but, but Jon Stewart basically did a, a whole series um, where he would, where he was essentially pointing out these problems, you know, with paper analog processes and how it could benefit from the digitization, right? And that's, that's what we're good at. And guess what? They're now using Alfresco to solve this problem. Right. So, you know, it, it, the situation was so bad, not, not, Jon Stewart was making fun of this, but they had, um, they had stacks of boxes that were weighing down the floors on their <laughs> warehouses where you could take a leveler and and see that the, the the floor was sagging but but you know putting all the humor and sarcasm aside you know th this organization clearly wanted to deliver be better service and better value to the constituents and so they invested in this and they uh, are deploying alfresco along with you know uh, scanners to scan documents into alfresco um, they get stored inside aws's gov cloud so it's secure it's safe right and and the the whole idea here is that um, as, as this deployment continues to to, to progress, we're going to length we're going to shorten excuse me that lengthy one year process down to three months and eventually less than that and and you know this is the government trying to do the right thing and I think they're succeeding at it. Yeah. Luis, I want to ask you about yes. um, the joke on Twitter right now on our crowd chat is Amazon is a price drop as a service, which is, <laughs> <laughs> which is great, right? I mean, who doesn't That's like a price? New one. We've exactly. Heard that. Yeah. <laughs> That's why I brought it up. Yeah. I'm always adding new stuff here in the queue. So, yeah. obviously, that's cool. They're lowering prices. They're adding new stuff. We're seeing the SSDs finally come on board. Yes. So that's all great. We love big. We're a big customer of Amazon. We love it 100% on Amazon on yeah. our crowd chat. But the question that everyone's asking is, where are they in the enterprise? So you're starting to see that now, all in with, with uh, in in four. You got these guys going crazy now. They're changing the game. So they're not going to put the lipstick on the pig and say we're going to be enterprise like the other guys. Yeah. You're seeing them do things a little bit differently. That's their that's yeah. their style. So I got to ask you. As someone who's out there on the cutting edge on, on the cloud side, as well as having a peek into legacy business structures, you're dealing with yeah. a lot of legacy, which is enterprise. Yeah. What is Amazon doing right, and what do they need to do better to be enterprise ready? Well, because they're not there yet, but they're getting there. Yeah, I think, you know, we, we know that, that Amazon, when they started, when AWS first launched, they were doing a, a pretty thriving business, building a thriving business on startups, right? But the problem with startups is that they're much like the restaurant business. You know, nine and 10 are going to fail. And, uh, and so in order to build a long-term sustainable business, you need to start looking at traditional enterprises. And, and as an Amazon partner, I have first-hand knowledge and, and observations of, of how Amazon's whole organization is, is, is oriented towards building a stronger enterprise business. So, um, so this- I mean, that train's coming down the track, but the question is when, yeah. and, when and how long will it take? They're pretty fast. Oh, I, they've they've essentially done it now. But uh, uh, I was uh, I was present at their sales kickoff um, uh, this last uh, January, and and I can tell you that that this is what's coming out of their executive leadership. They've hired like crazy. Um, their their team has effectively you know tripled in the last you know several years. So it's it's you know they're I think they have the the field organization to to support the kinds of, uh, you know, the customers that they're uh, uh, going after. And I think the technology uh, is, is very, very credible, right? It's, it's ready to, for these kinds of use cases. They, they take security so seriously, and that's a big thing for enterprises. You know, the, the, the price model, you know, CapEx versus OpEx, right? That's also very appealing to large organizations. So it's working, it's happening things, now. One of the things about Amazon that's been impressive is that, and, and this is a double-edged sword for them, right? I mean, at one level, and they don't do a lot of grandstanding. They, yeah. they pretty much stick to their knitting, they're, they're geeks, they're, yeah. they're working on stuff, the cloud, it speaks for itself on the product side. But now you have competition, the war of, of 
for the developer is in full swing, not just like startup developer, enterprise cloud operations. You got IBM with Blue Mix in the cloud. You got HP trying to copy yeah. Amazon. Cisco just launched a billion dollar cloud yes. initiative. Internet of everything, or whatever the hell they call it, uh, basically Internet of Things. So you get the DevOps culture going on, and you got all the big guys trying to put that seawall up to stop that wave in the enterprise. So some say, I say, it's going to be hard to do. Yep. Um, but now you have Amazon has to compete. What do they have to do? I mean, is it? Do they? You think they're going to change course in terms of how they do things to react to the competition? You think you see the heads down and just keep the rear view, everyone in the rear view mirror? It would be folly not to react, right, I think, um, but, uh, but they're so far ahead that that gives them certainly that first mover advantage. Now, I would say that uh, um, they, you know, they need to keep an eye on the competition, they need to continue to innovate, they need to listen to the customers, which, once again, they've demonstrated consistently that they listen to the customers, and I think they will, they will always have that leg up in terms of scale, uh, which leads to the economies of scale, right, those are the cost factor, uh, the, that innovation keeps coming from them, and, uh, and then, you know, they, they just have that advantage, and they, as long as they keep doing what they're doing, and, and, and demonstrating those that ability, that flexibility to adjust with changing market conditions, I think they're they're going to continue to be in a very good position. So Jeff, you got IBM, Oracle, HP, all got clouds, Pivotal VMware, it's the enterprise cloud, never mind the Google stuff we saw yesterday, and you got Microsoft. I mean, that is some significant, these aren't like pissant startups. Right, this right. Is like, a lot of resources. This yeah. is like, IBM's all in on the cloud, yeah. they got the big data thing going on, I mean, they got to be scared. There's telltale signs on this. Yeah, right but now. what's interesting on Jassy's uh, keynote, they had the Gartner Magic Quadrant with 14 cloud providers, and and he said they've got 5x according to Gartner computing power of the other 13 combined. The other thing I thought was really interesting in terms of listening to customers and changing their business is he talked about adding people resources, a phone number, somebody to call when you need support. Exactly. And there's a couple of names in that in that list that you mentioned where you can't find a phone number. They're not in the yellow pages. So um, that's interesting in that it's a different model for them, but if you look at the tremendous customer service in terms of, um, uh, of a culture that you get with Amazon from the consumer side, and to really take that point of view and just constantly listening to their customers, uh, I don't know that they're looking at the competition as tightly as they might, but they certainly listen to their customers, it sounds like, and keep responding to yeah. those needs. I agree, I agree wholeheartedly. Um, but, you know, they continue to innovate, they continue to do what they're doing, I think they're doing okay. Yeah, it's just, you know, not a lot yeah. of talk about test and dev, you know, they've got 14 of these summit shows, John, 14 summits, there's 4,000 people here, yeah. and it's free. And it's really just about coming in, learning about the uh, learning about the applications, learning about the infrastructure, hearing about best practices from the Amazon people as well as as your peer group. So they they're pretty much heads down. They look at customers. Yeah, I mean, I mean, to me, what's impressive about Amazon is that they're launching so much new stuff at a rate that's alarmingly amazing. It's just like it gets your attention, and it's almost too over the top. I mean, I'm sitting there listening to Jassy. It's just like. We have this, we have this, we have containers on EEC2 optimized for the government, for the security, for, you know. So you're seeing, you're seeing past container with uh, Elastic Beanstalk, it's phenomenal. Elastic Cache, the Redis stuff, the Node.js stuff. I mean, the DevOps culture is the, is the new modern era that's the printing press kind of impact. It really is so phenomenal. And I'm not sure the other guys can compete. And I gotta, I gotta ask you, Luis, what do you think is the big disruption? Is it the app side of it? Is it the code agility, the fact that they're interested in new stuff? Is it that they're constantly changing the game and moving the goalpost, if you will, every day on the competition? What is the key well, thing? Agility is at the core of everything that they were doing, right? And, and it's agility to a, a variety of different constituents. So there's the, the DevOps, you know, the, the sysadmins, et cetera, who are deploying infrastructure using Amazon's virtualized uh, of, well, infrastructure, right? You know, capabilities. They're the actual engineers who are writing the code, writing the applications, and need a quick way to develop, test, iterate, right? Fix bugs, etc., and then push it off to the DevOps guys who then deploy it to production, right? Uh, so, so I think it's it's it all hinges on on making sure that these audiences are agile while still addressing, you know, the. Uh, uh, the other factors, as I said before, cost. Well, the the other one is the scale, right? I mean, what oh, made yeah. x86 win over everything is that <laughs> Intel had such massive scale on the PC yes. side that that just pulled uh, the, uh, the development and the pricing, which is going to be interesting as yeah. x86 goes against the sea of ARM processors that are now in phones. But yeah. Amazon's got such scale that they can leverage. Well, they have the, what they're also doing is they're bolting on an ecosystem, and I think that's critical. If you look at all the success 
you need to have on a platform. You mentioned the x86. You had some scale, you had an ecosystem up and down the stack from chips to apps. Uh, now it's the same thing you're seeing with Amazon. Just the uptake and breadth of customer base is impressive. But I, I gotta ask Luis about OpenStack and these other alternatives yep. because one thing that OpenStack has provided great hope for enterprise guys is the, the composite capability of it, this cataloging. Yeah. You know, we're hearing about cataloging APIs and, and finally getting to service-oriented architectures, finally, right? Yeah. Um, or will that lose steam? So it's, you know, people want to go where the, the signal is, right? So yeah. like, what's your take on OpenStack? So OpenStack is, um, it's formidable what they've accomplished, right, over, over the last uh, few years. Um, the, the problem with OpenStack is it, it's only half of the equation, right? You don't get the scale, if you don't have the, well, the data centers to deploy this to, right? You don't have, you, you can only create essentially mini clouds, at least this is what I, the way I see that small organizations or, or you know, more traditional enterprises are going to be able to leverage the technology. Will they be able to derive a benefit from this? Absolutely, they can. Uh, because the fact is that, that programmatic virtualization, essentially, right, the ability to, for a few lines of code, deploy your infrastructure is beneficial no matter whether you're doing it in your own data center or in a public cloud like AWS. But uh, of the long-term prospects, I. At, the, at this moment, I'm not particularly gung ho about but it. But you see m m many clouds certainly as the future environment. People well, having multiple cl cloud for this, yeah. cloud for that. Well, I, I I I think we overuse the term cloud. I'm sure you <laughs> would all agree, right? Um, <laughs> but uh, but yeah, there's going to be you know, resources. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it's it's re these are resources as a service. You're right. Yeah, it's overused word. So, exactly. It's yeah. very much so. So um, so yeah, I, I think it's got a life, and and, and we're going to see a lot of you know vendors in there. Um, I would, I would put my money on, of course, Microsoft and uh, AWS and Google for sure. I think IBM, you know, with SoftLayer, et cetera, they're, 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 gonna, they're gonna make an impact. Rackspace is, of course, a player uh, in here. So, so what I- What about Pivotal and Cloud Foundry, that whole deal? Yeah, I don't know yet. I, I'm, I, I, like, I like the idea behind Pivotal. I, it's I kind of a that. fat pass layer, people are complaining. Yes, and I think- Kind of bloated. It's bloated. Yes, I agree. You know, and I'm just not a fan at the moment, but that doesn't mean I couldn't be converted. I'm, I love new technology, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna try out whatever they, they give me, and at least try to be as objective as possible with it. Yeah, you want to see the meat on the bone, right? Exactly. You want to see the sizzle and steak, right? Exactly. You hear sizzle, let's see what's on the grill. Yeah, exactly. Spill, exactly. <laughs> so what are we gonna be talking about next year when we have you on? What, what do you think is the big delta between wow. now and then? Can you I, see that far I, in the I, future, I, or is it just way too <laughs> scary? It, it, it is a little scary, but uh, uh, you know, for, I know that for Alfresco, it's going to be more, more SaaS and more hybrid technologies that bridge the, the on-prem, behind the firewall stuff with the cloud in a sane way, in a way that makes sense. I mean, we hear a lot of people talk about hybrid, and, and I just don't think they're executing on it in, in a way that actually is practical for the customers. So that's what I hope to be able to talk to you about, is, is show and demonstrate that customers are using AWS, using our technology at Alfresco for document management and collaboration. To, to, in a, in a, to enable a real hybrid uh, use case where data just seamlessly flows back and forth and, and work gets done, right? And that's what I hope to talk about. At the end of the day, work yeah. getting done. What do you think about the Google uh, pressure yesterday of being applied? What's your take I, on Google? They've been pretty quiet, very focused on their cloud, very high end. They're, they're doing the right things. And uh, I was fortunate to, uh, to attend the Google uh, Partner Summit uh, two weeks, three weeks ago, something like that. And, uh, and I'm very, very impressed at what they're doing. They're building a credible business around not just compute engine, but um, app, uh, what is it, app engine and Google apps in general. They, they're coming at it from a more platform angle, I would say, um, as in platform as a service type of angle. And I think it's, I, I think it's very commendable. And I like it. I, I've, um, I, I still am not ready to deploy you know, my workloads to, uh, to Google yet, because I think they're still doing the kinds of things that AWS were doing in the earlier days, so the kinds of things that are interesting more to the startups, but, uh, but I, I hope that in, in a year's time I should be able to, to demonstrate that you know, enterprises will be delivering, uh, or excuse me, taking advantage of Google's platform, just as well as they're taking advantage of Amazon's. Okay, final thoughts from you, Luis, on this show. Why is it important? Share it to folks out there. Um, what is going on? Why is this show so hot? What's the big deal about it? Amazon Summit. This I, week. I'm gonna take. I'm, I'm gonna focus on education. You know, um, the best way to get mindshare is by educating your uh, your audiences. And this is what's great about these these shows. They're they're worldwide. They're happening. Well, you know, they're, they're happening in the U.S. You know, two locations in the U.S. London, Europe. I'm in Sydney. You know, we're gonna be in Sydney. So, it's it's this opportunity to educate the the potential users 
uh, as to how to take advantage of this technology and you're doing it for free, it's a great thing. And, and, and that's that's what I'm going to... It's really you know, putting your money it. where your mouth is in terms Very of going after so. the development community, yeah, right? You should I mean, not charge... free yeah. lunch out here and uh, there's yeah. a huge crowd that people can't see at home, but this is a packed... Yeah. Pat. Yeah, I mean, it's it's a war for the developers, right? I mean, you're seeing all those names you mentioned with the IBM event. They're all wanting the developers, but it's it's the developer world's changed. DevOps is the new way, and the new the new breed of uh, developers, yeah. whether you're old school getting on the new school or just pure born on the stack integrated stack model, is no one downloads stuff anymore. No one wants to push no. patches. They want auto correction. They want auto scale, and they want uh, revision control. Yeah. Um, push it to GitHub push it to the cloud, exactly. I'm good. And that's infrastructure as code. This is the new way. You uh, don't see that stopping. No, I don't see that stopping. I mean, it, uh, you know, as, a, as an open source vendor, you know, our business model initially started with the idea of, of encouraging people to download our product, you know, take an hour to install it and configure it and, and then test it. Well, you know, when SaaS came around and started really becoming popular, it essentially replaced that model, right? You know, it, now you get instant gratification. Take 30 seconds to fill in a registration form and boom, you're using that application. And so, so that just, that's a simple example of, of the kind of flexibility and power of basically cloud delivered applications and solutions. And that's not going to stop. I really is not going to stop, and I think you know what we're going to see is more workloads moving to to the cloud, and uh, and very few workloads remain behind the firewall. Right, right, and he brought that up in the in the keynote, right? Not which should go to the cloud, but which shouldn't. Essentially, yes. Luis Sala, thank you for coming on the cube. We got it right. The, the spreadsheet was updated. I apologize earlier. <laughs> on, uh, usually, uh, I, I never really blow the names. This is the cube. We are live in San Francisco, doing what we do. We go out to the events. We extract the signal from noise. We go where the action is. And uh, here in our hometown backyard of San Francisco, all the actions about cloud, Google putting the pressure on yesterday with price drops, huge uh, competition lined up, chasing Amazon, trying to copy Amazon, and boy, it's going to be very difficult if they keep on moving the goalposts, changing the game. It's going to be very hard to meet that kind of trajectory uh, for these other competitors. But you know what? The enterprise is wide open, and that's where the action is going. This is SiliconANGLE we'll be covering. We'll be right back with our next guest after this short break.